our next session really looked at sort of this fundamental question, is African-American history as American history. Uh, in some ways, what I think we hope this session would do would to begin to move the public to follow what scholars have done, which is recognizing that they can centralize the African-American experience and that it is not an ancillary story, but in some ways, as I've always said, it's the quintessential American story. It's interesting to me that while this is a question that scholars have wrestled with for several generations, it's still a question. It's interesting, though, because I, I you had a fundamental challenge, which we talked about in this final session, which is that uh, historians and other museum professionals have found that people tend to be interested in themselves. Yes. Uh, when you publish an encyclopedia, the first thing people do is they open it and look for entries about where they came from or their ethnic group or their neighborhood. Uh, when people go to museum exhibitions, uh, it seems that people tend to go more towards to exhibitions that are about themselves. Uh, part of the interest in heritage, in genealogy, is quite frankly, uh, narcissistic, yes. to, to be cynical about it. So if you're trying to build a museum that's arguing that Afri African American history is American history, and you want people to come here who not only are looking for themselves, who not only are looking for the exotic, uh, but who want to come here to truly learn, how do you do that? Well, part of it is that you have to shape a museum that says this is the American story so that the kinds of things that people are looking for, understanding American notions of liberty or spirituality or optimism, and you shape that through an African-American lens. The other thing, quite candidly, is part of what was so powerful about this session was that there were still so many gaps between people who would grapple with this as an American story, and that Part of the reason I came back to the Smithsonian is the Smithsonian is one of the very few places where people will come and grapple with things beyond their scope because they're doing the Smithsonian. So my hope is that if this museum can pilot the way that we help people see this is all of their story, that it will then begin to shape other museums and it will begin to make sure that these questions that are grappled with by our colleagues in the academy get played out in important public spaces. We try to think about the future of the African-American past and talk about the juxtaposition and the integration, the interaction, the contestation over what it means to talk about American history, its relationship uh, to African-American history. The politics of intellectual inquiry is never done because it too is part of the struggle. And the notion that ideas matter. And what David Blythe sort of concluded with the quote and, and invoking Frederick Douglass, and in a way, Douglas was the sort of embodying the notion that ideas matter. And we're reminding that the power of words and images actually come together to give us some sense. And so my colleagues are going to talk in a certain kind of way about these politics of intellectual inquiry as we think about African American history as American history. Progress as has, has always been in the African American experience has been in effect, creating a plateau from which the next stage of struggle proceeds. Um, and the progress that's been made is not to be put down, uh, but simply built upon. As historians, we have the obligation to um, give a, a fair and critical perspective on progress and on where we have come from because it is necessary for the next steps that we might take this whole issue of African-American history as American history, part of it is thinking about purpose. We're in the National Museum of American History. And in September, the National Museum of African-American History and Culture is going to open. And the, one of the issues, obviously, is this question of, well, what does that mean when you have these two museums? And one of the ways to get at this question is, what does the public, and I would say the publics, what do the publics, expect when they walk into these two museums. 
So when people walk into this museum, if they're American, it doesn't matter whether they're African American or, or Jewish or Italian American, whatever, uh, they expect to find themselves. Every American ought to be able to find themselves in this museum. This is the Museum of American History. What will people expect when they walk into a museum of African American history? If they're not African American, are they going to expect to see something that is other? Well, I'm going there because I want to learn about them, because I'm being a good citizen, uh, because this is what I should do. Uh, that's in the best of all possible worlds. In the worst of all possible worlds, it's the, it's the gaze. It's the gaze on the other. So I, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to how the public is going to be seeing this difference between what something called African American history is and something called American history is. Uh, I mean, obviously, African American visitors to the new museum will also expect to see themselves, to see their history. How do you tell the story? I mean, a framework still from slavery to freedom, from plantation to ghetto, from X to Y, and it sort of pulls in that, that theme of progress. Uh, and so we, and it's a problematic that gets to be tested. But if you're rewriting now, how would you actually think about framing your work? Well, I, I did write it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. It's called Creating Black Americans, yeah. African American History and Its Meaning, 1619 uh, to the Present. And it was not a from to. Yeah. It had two parts, uh, two sides to it. One was visual, mm -hmm. and uh, one was textual. One was mm -hmm. text. It was a, a synthetic narrative history. Mm -hmm. But all the images were black fine art. And I chose that strategy because I wanted to get into the scientific text, because I was writing as a historian, as a scientist, as someone who wanted her readers to be able to trust what I said, whether or not you agreed with me politically, which meant keeping the passion out of the writing. The passion is in the images because black artists felt free and beautifully, abundantly made artwork relating to, uh, to African-American history. In my case, uh, the book is The Children of Fire, which came out in 2010. And ironically, it was uh, contracted by Hill and Wang as a replacement for a From Two book, which was Augie Myers from Plantation uh, to, to uh, Ghetto. Um, and at first, I kind of struggled with it in the sense of, you know, it's a synthesis, it's a textbook. I mean, you know, all the stuff that could be told and, and needs to be told. And then uh, after a couple of years, I abandoned that. And uh, I think the inspiration for how I finally organized that book, which is in terms of generations of African Americans, um, which gets away from an organization which had been the tendency of some of the earlier texts, including John Hope Franklin's, where it's organized according to you know, the various periods of American history and often presidential administrations. And so uh, I want to tell the, pe the story from the people's, you know, themselves perspective. And what helped me do that was actually to think about my father's life. Um, my father was born in 1917, uh, grew up in, in Jim Crow uh, South in Southside Virginia um, on a farm, uh, went to fight in the Pacific in World War II. Um, and uh, died in, in 2000. How would a history through my father's eyes, or someone like my father, uh, be written? Uh, and he lived across several, it goes back to the whole thing of progress too. My father would have sneered at the notion that we haven't made progress. I mean, he, his first half of his life was a daily insult in terms of uh, you know, just living. Um, and you know, so the civil rights movement made a a dramatic rupture and change uh, in, in his life as he could see it, which is not that you know, everything was all hunky-dory, but rather it had been changed. You don't tell everything. Everybody doesn't get in there. Every incident doesn't get in there. I mean, that's an encyclopedia, uh, you know, not a story. I call that the African-American Odyssey because I didn't want my students to think that we started off as slaves that there was an African background. And 
That's, that was the reasoning behind. So the whole first three chapters about Africa, you know, and, uh, and then into the middle passage and focusing on community development and individual achievement and resistance, 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 but also the, this is an odyssey. This is a journey, and we'll get to freedom one of these days. I really tried to talk about the very recent past, and I found the challenge for, uh, in that to be to uh, give a, um, a very hard look at the uh, structural legacy of discrimination, uh, the way it has uh, embedded itself and printed itself on American society today, the uh, peculiar vulnerability uh, of many uh, African Americans to changes in the economy, the rates of foreclosure, for instance, the rates of uh, people suffering from predatory loans. Uh, African Americans were hit uh, by the Great Recession harder than uh, any other group. So to, to make that vulnerability clear and to make clear how those, um, again, those structural legacies uh, continue and at the same time, though, to look at larger uh, themes in the economy and to, re to show that a lot of different groups uh, have been affected by changes in the economy over the last 30 or 40 years or so. Jesse Jackson used to say, when the lights go out in the factory, all the workers look like they're the same color. We've had an array of themes that have come through. Um, everything that we've heard. And so there's been conversation about mental health, um, but also mental illness. And so we've heard a little bit more about illness than health. And so there, there's issues about art and music, education, uh, the body as a site of contestation. Um, we've heard a little bit about then uh, trauma and, and its relationship uh, to also humor, gender and sexuality, social mobilization, and politics, both high and low. Um, a little less about color and the place of birth uh, in, in the overall narrative. But if we think about this narrative and the elements of the odyssey, the journey, the making and the creating, uh, and the challenges of, and I think uh, going back to a comment uh, that was made even on the opening night, which is, is that uh, there's both one black America uh, and 40 million black Americans. And that this lacing of the story, I think it was yesterday, it was Deborah, it means the lacing of that theme of how and in what place and in what way you create uh, these meta narratives. Uh, and, and in some ways, I think it was Stephanie's invocation of mythology. I mean, when do you want and insert myth? What do we mean by truth? I mean, what's the relationship of the historian um, both to myth and truth? Um, because myth-making actually in, if you start at the family level, and I'm sure it's true of Tom's family, it certainly was true of my family, um, people made up all kinds of stories. Uh, and they made up these stories for a particular kind of reasons, sometimes for psychological healing and for getting from the day one uh, to the next day, some ways to, re to insert a progressive hope that indeed uh, tomorrow won't be like yesterday. And so there's this way in which myth becomes its own agent uh, in the process of humanizing and, and being human and struggling against what it means to always find yourself in this sort of place and, and, and struggle o over power. I have a much more sympathetic um, take on his decision than certainly I would have had in the 1960s, 70s. Um, because John Hope, and, I, and that's from doing a bit of study, which I may write on some day or another, um, as the old folks say, if I live. Um, he came out of a generation you know, of scholars in the 30s that um, were very much uh, I mean, to say that they were integrationists is sort of, doesn't quite get, get it. For John Hope, and he tells the story of trying to go into Southern archives and, you know, and basically being, you know, like the, the student in the integrated in Texas, I guess, was put in a separate, you know, space. Uh, or even going into uh, the Library of Congress and not being able to have lunch, you know, on Capitol Hill. I mean, that's a whole different era those folk were dealing with and so to integrate was an insurgent 
you know, act, a political act, very much so. And that had defined their coming of age in the profession. And so to call himself an African-American historian, even though he wrote the textbook at that point of African-American history, ironically, to call himself an African-American historian was to, in fact, uh, in, concede you know, uh, that separation. To call himself a Southern historian meant that he belonged there. He belonged you know, in that you know, uh, area of study and inquiry, uh, and he brought with him his african Americanness to that study. Where Franklin changed his mind was in the 1980s, when he became very angry and uh, during the Reagan administration, and he decided that he had been wrong about some things, that the kind of accomplishments that Tom was just referring to, uh, he began to question what the meaning of those accomplishments were, in part because of how quickly the discursive environment could change by just having a president who could say certain things and legitimate certain things. Reverend Wyatt T. Walker once said, if you rob a people of their sense of history, you take away their hope, end quote. And John Hope Franklin responded by saying, I think knowing one's history leads one to act in a more enlightened fashion. I can't imagine how knowing one's history would not urge one to be an activist. I know the more I learned about my history, the more I wanted to change things towards what I thought our place ought to be in this history. From slavery to freedom, first of all, now he wrote this book in 1947, so you know that he knew that this wasn't about being a slave and then getting free, because there was too much history between emancipation or the 13th Amendment and 1947. He was making history at the same time that he was writing history. There are ways in which we and our colleagues can have access to popular press, popular culture, because history is all around us. I would love people who are trained in African American history or experienced in African American history to take those terms of engagement, those themes of discussion, uh, that theory of seeing the society more widely, and then take those from African American history into other areas of history, so that it would not be simply that we use our expertise in African America, but in wider societies, because we see things that other people don't necessarily. Every major event, every major turning point, every uh, development in the American experience has either involved African Americans directly as actors or involved them as an issue from Jamestown to, the, to yesterday. So in that sense, you can't write American history without writing about African American history or African American experience. But the point I was trying to make earlier, there's also another side to that, that while all American history is African American history, it's not, the reverse is not true. That is that there are aspects of the African American experience that have to be studied, uh, recovered, that are not simply the relationship to the American project or to white Americans or other Americans, but have to do with African American communities. That tension, uh, which I think has been there from the beginning and I think will always be there, between American history, of which we are a part, just like we are a part of America, and African American history, which is also because we are apart from America. This has to do with the way in which we see what history is. And one of the interesting things that, that we've seen the last two days is people talking about the diversity of African American history within the field, as opposed to people seeing African American history as being the thing that diversifies American history. African American history is American history because African Americans are Americans. Whether we have roots uh, three, four, ten generations deep, or our parents or ourselves are immigrants, that is a given. What other people do f with it, 
Some of it will be awful, some of it will be so-so, some of it will be very nice, some of it will be lucrative, some of it will be visual. All those things will happen, everything. 